Is that you, Mario? Yeah, hi. Excellent. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, okay, you perfect. sound great. Strategies in a world of continuous legal uncertainty. <laughs> Hello. Ooh. So uh, thank you for this introduction. My name is actually Marina. Um, <laughs> no worries. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen with you. Just a moment. I have a short presentation. Can you see me? Looks great. We can yeah. see your screen. Yeah, perfect. Yep. That's great. So. Um, Hello to everyone. Uh, I'm Marina and I'm actually a lawyer. Uh, so this is why I'm talking about this topic. Um, I had a recent presentation at the token engineering event. So I thought that would be also interesting for you to hear more about that. Um, and um, I've been in this space for the last, I would say, three, four years, uh, working with blockchain startups uh, in a blockchain accelerator and now working um, on different projects at the moment. And one of them is also a research project uh, that we're doing with a token engineering event. Um, and some of, the, some of the thoughts and some of the things that I'm going to say is also connected to what I learned through this project. Um, and actually stay tuned. Uh, I'm sure that Angela from the token engineering community, she will share more about that because this was actually um, her idea. So, um, how to survive in the legal uncertainty. Um, we are used to have legal uncertainty in um, all the different um, industries, uh, also in the past, like FinTech and other industries. But I would say that the uncert legal uncertainty we have uh, here at the moment um, in the blockchain space is very high and very different. Um, and this, um, this Latin um, combination of this Latin wor uh, words actually um, is saying that there's always society first and there's law that comes after that. So there's always something that we see changing in the society or in the tech and law always comes next to that. Um, so we are used to have innovative um, uh, innovation coming up, but then law is always um, taking some time to just follow up uh, with it. Um, and also in the last years, we have seen very different projects uh, aiming to build something like a decentralized world, something that would be um, different and would have no um, legal restrictions or even no uh, nations or states. But unfortunately, when, when we lawyers uh, come in, um, this is the reality that we bring. We bring the, the reality of um, different regulations um, and um, different laws that you need to or you should be compliant with um, so that's that's um, unfortunately the reality although we are living and working in the digital world the news in the last years most of it is actually talking about laws and is actually talking about uh, what are regulators saying about different things that are happening in the space um, and this is one very interesting uh, from my point of view um, the SSC commissioner talking about the safe harbor for ICOs, and that's, that might be a very interesting and uh, like a potentially um, interesting thing for projects that would want to raise money um, the way they did in the past. Also, the other trend is that um, it's getting very, very expensive to be compliant. So although you are not a startup that is a, like a very new startup, but uh, you're in the space for some time, uh, the costs of you being compliant are raising. We have we can see here Kraken uh, talking about it and also they tweeted about it. Um, the, the cost is just getting um, higher and you can see in this um, lower left um, part, uh, the costs in 2015 were so lower than the ones in 2019 um, and they can still, they need to cope with that. And whenever you are building something or whenever you want to build a startup or a network or a DAO, um, you actually need to work and to have an idea of how much money and time you're going to spend um, towards building your idea. And if you have this legal uncertainty, it's really hard uh, to understand when and how to do that. Um, so 
if we're talking about DAOs, there have been various different, um, I mean, different um, projects already working on that and um, different lawyers, uh, very innovative and very courageous uh, to work in this space. Uh, most of you already are familiar with the, with the law projects uh, or for example, the BB additive models or models that are um, non-profit models like foundations or a series of um, like intersecting different um, entities like profit and non-profit models. Um, but DAOs are something that are very, um, very interesting for lawyers, I would say, and also interesting, uh, of course, for the builders. Um, but why most of them are working in this space, because it's much more interesting than uh, doing the, the legal stuff that we are used to. Um, and the interesting part that I wanted to talk to you about is actually the model law that Koala is drafting at the moment. So I'm a part of the organization that is called uh, Koala and um, these organizations have been in the space for a really long time. Um, Primavera de Filippi and Constance um, are the ones that actually um, are uh, working within this, our organizations and are leading all the activities here. Um, and in the last months, we have been meeting uh, and working uh, towards designing uh, this model law for DAOs that was actually help DAOs um, to, um, to have uh, like a legal framework that is more suited for them than the ones we have now at the moment. Um, so this is, um, I would say, a very long-term approach. Uh, it's not something that you would use right now if you want to build a DAO, but it's something that um, would need to happen in the next years. But still, um, I think we need to start working on that and um, maybe see changes, uh, not right now, not at the moment, but um, of, uh, I, I'm sure that this is going to be uh, very useful for, for DAOs in the future. Um, so actually the aim of the model law is to assist governments in crafting their own uh, DAOs and to, uh, laws on DAOs. Um, and it's actually something that is not that new, uh, that have been, uh, has been used before. Uh, a model law usually is drafted to, um, to, to help countries to frame a certain legislation uh, on different topics. And one of the most interesting one is actually the United Nations uh, Commission on International Trade Law um, has drafted one on electronic commerce and it's somehow um, connected or maybe um, similar to the one that we are designing because um, they were actually, th their aim was um, was actually to um, to remove legal obstacles and increase uh, predictability for electronic commerce. That means that um, bringing, bringing equality uh, when we are talking about paper-based or electronic-based information. Um, and this is something that this law has been very successful and has been used by many countries. And this is where we were also looking into when we were designing the model law for DAOs. Um, so the model law, as I'm saying, as a uh, law that is actually whole, um, helping projects and helping countries uh, to design laws, uh, but it's a really long-term um, long term approach. And we're using the functional equivalence approach, which was also used for um, the previous model law that I was talking about. And that um, actually means that the um, equivalence of the underlying process and the functions uh, of traditional paper-based legal requirements uh, were um, assessed um, and we're um, actually thought about of how we can use um, the, the internet, whatever we have now in the digital form, um, and maybe use it instead of using uh, the paper, um, paper form. So the Koala model of for DAOs um, would like to uh, specify legal rights and obligations of DAOs, but what is very important is without requiring them to register to traditional corporate law rules. Um, that means that um, 
for very simple DAOs, you would um, you would not need to have a legal entity. Um, you would not need to um, to have an LLC or a foundation as we do uh, have now. But you would still need to be, um, I would say, compliant with this uh, with this law, uh, DAO law. Um, and we are also using the functional equivalence approach, um, which means that. Um, we would want to satisfy the relevant legal provisions through technological means. So we all know that uh, blockchain is bringing an additional layer of trust um, to whatever we're doing, whatever we're using uh, blockchain. And I think that uh, it would be great from the regulator point of view to understand that and actually to bring it to the legal framework that we have today. Um, and maybe not uh, that actually the, the blockchain is bringing. Um, so beyond DAOs, there are so many other um, legal questions and legal problems that we have um, and that are connected to the industry that we are working in, to the market and to the jurisdiction. We all know that it's very different if we are operating in Europe or if we are operating in the US uh, to, the, to your funding strategy. Um, so if you want to have like an ICO or an uh, ETO compared to um, to selling your shares or to uh, selling equity um, and the legal entity you have and the definition of the token. So a token is again a very important part of, of whatever we are building of our industry um, and there have and is very very novel for um, for I would say for the legal world. So the first time lawyers heard about tokens they were very um, I think surprised they didn't actually know what was that. Um, and um, I think that we have seen um, a lot of improvement in this space also from the legal and regulatory point of view. Um, sometimes when we are building startups, networks or DAOs, uh, it's very important to have this legal certainty because this is how we can predict the timeline and the funds that we are um, with, that we need in order to build our solution, but also later to know which is the market that we are addressing. Um, and again, bringing this legal clarity would help a lot of um, startups. And uh, how we are doing that, I think you are already familiar with uh, different organizations that are talking to the regulator. And I think that in the last few years, they have been very helpful. Um, I'm based in Europe, so I basically know some of them that are from Germany or France or Slovenia or the Netherlands. Um, I know that they are very active and they have brought a lot of clarity to the regulators. And I think that um, all the, the community, the whole community is actually um, gaining from this. Um, and um, some of them are using sandboxes. Some of them are trying to define new regulations, um, but most of them are also issuing opinions based on the talks they had with different projects. So um, one example that I wanted to show you uh, is again, the token and the different definitions that we have in different um, states uh, or countries. And so this is why it's very hard for a startup and for a project to understand, okay, what is, what is a token? I just need a definition and tell me what I need to do. Um, and I mean, this is, this is what I need to do in order to build my, uh, whatever I want to build my product. Um, so there are a few tokens and the names of the tokens that are used from different regulators uh, from their opinions that were issued mostly in 2018, I would say, or 19. Um, the FINMA, the Switzerland, uh, the Swiss regulator said there are three types of tokens. So the payment token, the utility token and the asset token. Um, the Malta um, authority have four types of token and the most important one I would say is the financial instrument, which is usually a security. So this is why um, it's important for us to understand if it is a financial instrument or not. And then it can be an electronic money or virtual timelines in order for us to um, to be compliant. And of course, um, the last one is the Linkenstein. Um, token container model, which is a very interesting model to my opinion. Um, they are actually talking about the token um, in a form of a, like a container, uh, which means that it, it's not really important uh, how we call it, but it's very important what is in the token. Uh, 
Um, so the lawyers are not really interested in in the white papers in our um, I, I mean in how we are defining that that but they want to understand what is the functionality of the token and this is how they define um, the actual token um, so I think this is a very good um, um, I think usage of, of the um, of the token because this is it's easier for non-lawyers to understand what a token actually means and uh, that the technical part is just like the container everything that is around that uh, but the substance is the important part and when i'm talking to projects and also listening to different presentations i always hear when they're saying okay um there's like the the, the technical part there's no friction in the technical part this is not the hard thing to do we are kind of solving that right now but the problem is the legal part and how can we bring the technical and the legal parts together so unfortunately again we cannot work in this digital world that is without boundaries but if we want to be compliant in all those different jurisdictions we would need to understand the definition of a token from each um and every jurisdiction and to understand how do they define this type of a container um, and what we need to do in order to be compliant. So um, actually to, to conclude this presentations, um, presentation, um, the strategies um, to, to work towards understanding or towards having more legal certainty in this industry is to evaluate your business idea uh, and to understand um, how much time do you need actually to, to work with the regulator or maybe just with the lawyer to be compliant um, and which markets are the ones that are um, that are hard to crack, which markets are the ones that you need to be compliant uh, working with the regulators. And, I, um, and I'm, I'm sure that most of the organizations that are doing that are very active and representing uh, some of the projects. And the last one is to stay informed. Um, there's so many um, different uh, news popping up from all over the world and it's really hard to be uh, to be informed but um, I think it's it's very important and crucial if also um, you want to build for example a startup um, and you, you want to to be compliant or a DAO um, just for you to understand the risks that you're going through and to um, to take um, to, to be informed about about those risks. Uh, so that's actually um, the end of the presentation. I'm happy if you have any questions because I think we still have some time left. So I have a quick question. Um, so like, there's a lot of communities, right, that are doing super cool stuff and they just kind of exist on the internet and then they're kind of building DAOs and deploying them to do some things. Um, what would you recommend for communities who are DAOifying um, as far as like thinking through if they want to actually like create a business model around their community or uh, take a product to market or whatnot? What's like the easiest minimal viable way for them to do that in a kind of safe and sane way from a regulatory and compliance perspective? So this is a very good question, but the answer would be it depends. Um, because it depends on what you're building. And if you want to be a DAO or if you want to be a startup or um, it depends the industry that you're in. And it also depends on uh, the market that you want to be in. Um, so I think the, the most um, it's very important at the beginning when you're building your product or when you're um, actually brainstorming about the ideas. Um, to to think um, also for, uh, about this legal perspective and to understand that um, the more the most um, complicated things are probably going to be uh, the ones that need more compliance um, and that are going to be also costly and we have seen also in the past um, I mean startups taking different approaches. Some of them are thinking about it from the beginning, especially the ones that are having um, institutional investors in. Uh, and of course, they also need more um, investments from the beginning, but also some that are just trying to uh, experiment with the tech um, for some time and seeing, okay, maybe this is viable. Uh, we have a solution 
uh, or we have a market for that and then thinking about this legal part and trying to raise money also to overcome uh, those problems. So it's complicated. It is. Great. Do you know, is there like an if this, then that decision tree where you can look through and say like, okay, if your token has derivatives, explore these things. If your token is simply used to buy a thing, explore these things. If you're, you know, like, like kind of like a, so people can pretty easily understand like, okay, my token does these things. I should be aware of these kind of issues. Um, is there like a kind of like a simple model or getting started guide like that that exists anywhere? Uh, that would be actually very cool. Uh, I think that at the beginning, like two years ago, that was this how we test um, document with a lot of questions where you can uh, answer those questions and understand if your token is a security uh, or not. Uh, but um, I think it's very hard to have something like that, to have something um, that would be really easy for you to understand. That's why, I mean, if you have something complicated, like a complicated product, you would need um, different lawyers in the room from different jurisdictions and from like specialized in securities law or in some other um, um, like topic. Um, so I think for um, to to start actually, uh, I know that um, Felipe did something like a canvas for DAOs, for example. Um, I think it would be interesting to start from there and also to um, to put the the legal um, the legal parts and the legal um, aspects there. So if there's someone who has these questions, how would they reach out to you or relevant people in the space to to start to understand? Um, how to move forward and better understand these things. Um, there are some very cool um, Telegram groups where we lawyers meet, uh, but also uh, here you can see my email. Um, and I don't know if there's a possibility to share some links or some um, Telegram groups for the guys out there. I think that would be great. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you want to drop them into the chat here on the sidebar chat window, you totally can. And then also, if okay. you want, we can coordinate to get those links and then have a, at the, like, after the intercon, we can send out like a newsletter or blog post or something saying people did cool stuff. And then in your section, we can drop in like the links to how people can engage with you and the relevant legal community. Okay, that would be great. Cool. Awesome. Um. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? Are any questions in the chat? I don't see questions on the uh, intercon chat. I don't know if there's YouTube mm -hmm. questions, though. YouTube wasn't really working for me when I tried it. Um, okay. At least I didn't see any YouTube and see if there's any questions there. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and thanks for thanks for sharing all this stuff. I've actually looked through the koala model. Um, you guys have a, a bunch of really cool docs there, actually. Um, so yeah, thanks for working on all that stuff and thanks for sharing. Um, the, you know, uh, some general high level things for people to think about as they're kind of DAOifying and tokenizing and, uh, and all that stuff. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, this is going to be a very long way uh, because first we would need to draft this law and I think we'll see. I think there's going to be very interesting things coming up, uh, but also trying to find and talk to um, a regulator, somebody that would actually be interested in doing that and, and um, yeah, and drafting this law with them and oh, seeing what the future will bring. So we've got yeah. one question from the YouTube um, okay. coming from Arseny Ivan Ivanov. Outside of block, outside of security tokens, what's the legal consensus on blockchain-backed transnational ventures? Blockchain-backed transnational ventures. Okay, this is so very interesting. A it's, that just means um, a DAO um, that operates globally, right? That yeah. sounds like, that's what it sounds like, yeah. Okay, cool. So I think that um, 
again, it, it really depends on what the DAO does. Uh, and if you have a token, how are you using the token? Uh, if you are funded by a token um, and stuff like that, I think that we can learn um, a lot from uh, the legal part, the legal work that was done to for the DXL, for example, and the terms and conditions there. Um, and yeah, this was a recent example that I think was the most interesting one. We were also looking uh, about uh, into that when uh, during this uh, koala workshops. Um, but it's like it's it's really really very important um, if your token is a security. If it is. Um, it's going to be very, very uh, hard to be compliant because at the end of the day, if we're looking at, at ICOs as something that was um, that was happening two years ago, uh, there is no uh, global compliant ICO or STO. Like all the STOs that we see right now are really focused on what one market and are compliant with this um, with this specific market's regulation. For example, in Germany or Liechtenstein or Switzerland. Um, so being global um, actually brings a lot of problems, but uh, I think they could be solved if this like global project um, is not that complicated. <laughs> and for example, if you think about like donation purpose DAO, something like that, uh, if you think about a DAO that would have a token that would be a security, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. Got it. Yeah, they're definitely saying as a DAO, not as an investment vehicle. I think that answers it. Okay. Uh, yeah. We have one more question from uh, the Telegram. There is a lawyer who's asking how a new lawyer might get involved um, with this or start in the space that you're familiar with. Oh, that's a great question. We love new lawyers. Um, <laughs> again, I would say that um, this Telegram groups um, are, are really, really important and you can learn so much from there. Uh, there's the Lao Telegram group. There's uh, some other legal Telegram groups. I'm going to share later. Um, I don't. I don't have the uh, the names now. And also from Twitter, like there are a lot of lawyers that are very vocal about what they're doing on Twitter. Awesome. So yeah, I've just pinged you in the Telegram chat, and you can drop the links there for people. Cool. We'll also drop it in the public chat. That covers all the questions, though. Thank you so much, Mariana. Yeah. Thank you. Marina, Marina, I'm doing it wrong again, yeah, Marina. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Perfect.